Mark Stein of the New York Times uh, is locked in uh, on the association and has been for a very long time. Covered the NBA since 1994 and the senior NBA reporter of the New York Times back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Mark? I'm good, Rich. Do I need to report what I'm wearing? Is that part of the, um, the Sure. What do you got, Mark? I mean, I know you're probably sheltered in place there in the city, but what do you got? Got on a, a Fila tennis hoodie to pretend that I'm a pro tennis player, which I really am not. My game is nowhere near good enough to justify the hoodie, but I'm pretending. Right. And I got a and I got a Cal State Fullerton hat on to rep my school. Atta boy, so. very very good. Um, so, what are you hearing about the NBA and uh, and and games? And I, I know things certainly in the city are particularly dire. But again, that we're we are talking sports. We're in the toy department of the sports world right now. Uh, is it possible that the NBA could return us to that spot? Do you think? I have to say, I'm a pessimist by nature, so I've been pretty cool on it throughout. Now, in league circles, they're certainly bandying about every conceivable scenario that you could think of, and and the bubble idea, you know, that is that has been knocking around now for a good week or two, and you know they're consi- you know they've considered the same thing in in soccer abroad in England and that I think that kind of ramped up the discussion because it emerged over the weekend that you know English soccer is seriously considering this and and it kind of brought more attention to the fact that people in the NBA had already been talking about it but just as a practical matter I mean let's just imagine let's fast forward to July pick a date in July July 15th you even if they go to Las Vegas, as has been suggested. Las Vegas has the hotel space. <clears throat> Las Vegas is where the annual G League showcase is, so the league is used to. The league already knows what it's like to bring thirty teams together and have them all playing games on on multiple courts in Las Vegas. So they've done that before. But for this to happen, you know, players, coaches, staff from thirty teams referees all the operators of the broadcast who would who would be making these because obviously they want to televise all this i mean you're still talking a num you know we're talking thousands of people still can you get all those people into one city quarantine them and ensure that they are all healthy and they all stay healthy and no one gets the virus again it's just really hard. You know, I am no epidemiologist, but it is really hard to imagine that coming to fruition. So um, are these just uh, – how serious are, are these conversations just to even take the figurative temperature check, to use the phrase of the day, Mark? I mean, they're serious, they're serious in that look, and, and I totally understand this viewpoint. I mean – I don't know what the end. I don't know. I don't know that it would benefit the league to just come out and say we're canceling the season now. I mean, why not give yourself every opportunity to play out the season if you can? I don't. There, there's really no upside into just canceling. So why not have constant meetings, constant discussions, and tell all 30 teams to, to you know throw out any idea you have. We'll listen. I mean, Adam Silver has made it clear that everything is on the table. He's he said that, and that's his approach. But I'm just trying to be a realist, and I think if you listen to voices around the league, the people who are talking about this pub- publicly, I think you know players would have a lot of safety questions. Are players going to feel safe going into an environment like that? I mean, I I just think there's a healthy degree of skepticism just because the situation is so dire i mean it's obviously a worldwide crisis and in terms of sports it's you know it's the biggest crisis that global sport has has ever faced i mean that's that's not overstating it so. right and, and and in the nba because it is a global sport um and and also with the nba uh in terms of the schedule the nba also had uh a prominent player test positive for coronavirus first the nba also had a uh, a uh, a player test positive for the coronavirus with people in a building getting set to play a game. Uh, they were the first to shut down. I mean, they, they kind of, after the Ivy League, the day after, I think the Ivy League decided to cancel their entire tournament in order to determine who was going to the uh, NCAA tournament that we all know eventually got canceled as well. Uh, the NBA was the first here, and they're kind of the first. And I know the NHL has a similar construct, but the NBA has a, a, a huger spotlight on it, to be very honest. 
So the question is, is is the NBA going to be the first to cancel games as well? You even said that they're just not ready to do that yet. Uh, what's the conversation on that front, Mark? Yeah, see, I don't, I don't know that you, you know, m- maybe, maybe there is a ribbon and, and tons of praise for being the first one to come out and say, we cancel. I suppose, you know, in some corners, you could say that that would be some sort of PR victory for them, maybe. But I, I mean, the, the, the clear sense coming from the league, at, at least at this point, you know, three plus weeks into this, the calendar just flipped to April. They, they do not want to rush to cancel. They want to give this every chance. And I think the one thing you can say is, there isn't a time crunch yet. There will eventually, the league will eventually reach a point when it says, you know what, trying to save this season is just going to mess up next season too much. But there is that faction around the league. And you mentioned Mark Cuban, and he's been very vocal about, you know, Mark Cuban is one of those guys, and he's not alone. That he is, he is one of the prominent people in this league who loves the idea of starting next season at Christmas and going through August and pushing free agency into September. And there is, there is a, a, you know, a faction of people within the NBA that would love to see a broad calendar change, which is not something that the NBA can just institute. That's something that has to be collectively bargained with the players. But because of these emergency circumstances, it, it could arise that the NBA has to try out that schedule and give it a test drive and see. So there are people in the league who say, you know, playing games, we've always wondered what it would look like to have real games in July, August, and September, have the draft much later, have summer league later, start at Christmas. So I think there hmm. there is there are some people in the league who <laughs> want to try all those things and these circumstances could force that. Necessity being the mother of invention, in other words, on that front. Exactly. Huh. Mark Stein here from the New York Times on the Rich Eisen Show. But then there's the concept of canceling games because let's get into this a little bit, even though there's there, there's a lot of legalese and we're talking about collective bargaining agreement, the words force majeure and putting, uh, putting aside um, money in an escrow account. If you cancel games, then <clears throat> perhaps there's a money saving aspect to things to take uh, salaries and take them and put them in escrow. Can you describe what no, what I mean, that's I, all about? I, I think it's the I think it's the opposite. Another, the, you know, the biggest reason to try to save the season is because this has already been a hugely expensive season for the NBA. Let's right. remember how it started. It started with the Daryl Morey tweet that fractured the NBA's relationship with China, and at the All Star Game, Adam Silver said that that event you know that controversy will cost the nba in the hundreds of millions you know somewhere be, you know he estimated somewhere be, you know above 200 million but less than 400 million but that's a lot of money and then now on top of this you know people fear that the losses when you add up the regular season games lost the money that would be owed back to the, the regional networks that have regular season games, mm-hmm. the loss of television and gate revenue in the playoffs, mm. that this is going to cross the billion threshold. So the withholding salaries, the whole concept of re- withholding salaries, that's all meant to try to keep next season salary cap and the split of money between the players and owners. Those are measures all to try to keep, you know, to not mess up next season. But this is going to be a hugely, hugely, hugely expensive season for the NBA. So that's a big motivation. Why? If if there's a chance to play in July, August, and September, they want to do it because it's the chance to theoretically recoup some of the money they're losing right now. And I guess the idea would be, just to game it out again from what you might have heard, that you take all 30 teams, you quarantine them where they are, right? they got to stay at home. And then you test them before, you test them throughout, you test them right after. And then you get them to Vegas, you test them before, they quarantine there maybe for another uh, week or two. And then everybody in this community has been deemed uh, COVID-19 free. And then you play the games. I guess that would be the way to do it, right? Is that the way? That's, I mean, right now, that's what people forecast is the most realistic way that 
this season can be continued and not just end abruptly. Obviously, baseball dealt with this in 1994 through a labor stoppage when they didn't have a close to the season. It's never happened in the NBA, and naturally the NBA wants to avoid that. They don't want to have a season that just ends at the 65-game mark with no champion. But, again, these are all, you know, it's still just conceptual because the NBA, and smartly so, has said from the start, we can only take our cues from the virus. The real experts, yeah. like Dr. Fauci. Yeah, the you virus. Know, that's you. that's what Do- Dr. Fauci says all the time, that the virus sets the timeline. Nobody yeah. sets a timeline. The virus is what's setting the timeline. And, then, and that's uh, true. That's it. Right. And then, of course, there's the question, in, in a way, that you're hearing the NFL getting a ton of blowback about saying we're going to hold a draft. I mean, just a draft, which does not require um, anybody to travel anywhere. It just requires people to have to... Uh, reconfigure in in front offices how they how they conduct the draft. Um, well, the N- the NFL has the great fortune of you know their their draft is so far removed right. from your the playing season. season. Right. I'm sure the, the the NBA would love to have its draft in June, but they don't know the order. No, I know it that. Might, right. It might have to be postponed if 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 they get any hope that there's that they can play games in July or August you got to hold the draft. Right. No, so. but the, the thing, the reason why I'm bringing all this up is you still have to realize also, I'm imagining, what, what the real world is is like and, and how it would be received to know that dozens, hundreds upon hundreds of NBA players and front office staff and um, would get tested in a manner that maybe, you know, the regular populace doesn't. And they'd have to... F- they'd have to figure all that stuff out to see if it's worth playing a season uh, amongst all of that. Right, Mark? I mean, wouldn't you agree? Let's, speaking purely from a societal perspective, yes. let's, let's hope that by July, that by the time we, we got to that point, right. that testing nationwide would not be the issue that it's been. I mean, you would like to think that that's the case. But again, that is, that is certainly not my... Uh, no, not no, my no, I know that. I, but again, in, in, it's, I'm not trying to put you in that position. Uh, again, it, but, but the whole idea is, is that a lot of NBA players got tested really fast, you know, back in, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And, and, and I'm, I'm just wondering if the NBA heard all of that and this would be factoring that into all of no, the equations. I think you're right. Would... I think there is, there is the societal component here. And if it, if it looks... You know, the NBA is not going to rush back and put thousands of people into a supposedly empty gym if you know, right. society, you know, if so many other communities are, are going through shutdown still and, and are in the position that we're in now. So they're, they're going to follow the directives that they get from government officials. And again, they, you know, I totally understand why you discuss these concepts, why you why you plan, you know. You know, the, the contingencies, contingencies upon contingencies is kind of the phrasing people throw around. Right. Certainly they're going to talk about, you know, they're going to brainstorm. But, you know, they're waiting for direction just like everyone else. Mark, appreciate the time. Stay healthy, stay uh, hearty, and uh, I'll, I'll give you a ring shortly. We'll check back in with you on all of this. Appreciate the call, Mark. Sounds good, everybody. Be good out there. You're right back at you. That's Mark Stein.